Well good morning everybody. Uh, today we're at, down at Turf Lock on the River X where the Exeter Ship Canal meets the River X. It's a bit of an overcast morning. We'll just do a pan around so you can have a look at the view here. Looking across now towards Exmouth, Limpstone in fact before you get to Exmouth and then over here you can see the entrance to the lock gates on the canal. And then behind those railings is the cycle track which continues uh, from here right the way down to Dawlish. We're just approaching the lock gates now at Turf Lock. And we'll pull up onto the lock here. Now we're looking down the lock, a few boats parked there. We'll wander down there in a minute. We'll pan down this way, there's the Turf Hotel. Now we're looking down the River X, down towards Exmouth. We've moved down there now to the second locker gate and you're getting a picture of where the boats are moored at the beginning of the Exeter Ship Canal. Going round slowly, you can see the Tusk Turf Hotel, but uh, it looks to be closed off at the moment, whether that's COVID or, or renovations, I don't know. And then we're looking at the lock itself. Now the uh, walking path is the one directly ahead. It goes right tight beside the canal all the way down. The cycle track is just a little bit lower on my left you're just down below the canal. Um, there's plenty of ways where you can uh, pause and, and get a view. You'll probably see in the distance one of the little trains heading down towards Dawlish. That is the main line into Plymouth and Cornwall um, and you get a, quite a lot of trains of various types running down that route. The ship canal is only five or six miles long. Uh, it's one of the oldest canals in the country. Uh, originally the River X was navigable all the way up to Exeter City, but in around the 1300s uh, the landowners um, down towards Topsham uh, decided that they were going to build weirs across the river to help their fishing and that stopped the boats were being able to go up. The most in infamous or best known of the, these landowners that disrupted this trade was Countess of Ware, who is now commemorated by a rather busy roundabout in the city, the Countess Ware roundabout, best avoided at all times. So because the river was blocked, the citizens of Exeter had no option but to build a canal around these blockages. And so the first cuts for the Exeter Canal were made some 400 years ago, I believe, three or 400 years ago. And it steadily increased as more landowners put obstructions to, to the river. So eventually it ran all the way from Turf Lock there up to Exeter City, up to the quay. And we're going to follow that as a cycle trail. It's a very easy cycle trail. It's completely flat for the whole route. It's uh, quite a cold morning this morning. It's early October and it's only 9.30. But we've got out early because the forecast is for the rest of the day is pretty atrocious and for the days following. So we grab the rides when we can. And it's quite cool, quite chilly on the arms. So you won't see many people out on the trail today. Um, but on a summer's day, this trail will be very busy. Families cycling with children, 
old folk on electric bikes and uh, even tricycles um, very nice very popular because I said before it's completely flat if you carry on beyond going south beyond turf lock you can go down to star cross where in the summer there's a ferry across to Exmouth and then you can cycle back up the other side of the river back up to Exeter or you can carry on down to Dawlish Warren and they will even right through to Dawlish all of it or almost all of it on safe cycle trails and no hills until you leave Dawlish Warren and head over the top and down into Dawlish itself well, we're coming up to a access to the canal here for bikes so we'll go up there and just show you what can be seen up here usually fishermen up here but uh, very peaceful very few of boats larger boats use this canal but it is quite widely used by canoeists and paddle boarders a uh, little small craft like that but it's a very peaceful spot if you pan right the way round look at the view the other way looking across open fields cattle grazing people walking the trail Oh, we're coming up now to a, a point where the Topsham Ferry will take you across the River X, across to Topsham. And we'll just go up here and uh, show you the river at this point. We go across this little swing bridge over the canal, and there's the River X, and across there is the ferry point but the it's a very small ferry it only runs between April and September and we're just in October now so we won't be seeing it now and if I'm honest I have never seen it but back on the trail again still down below the canal here with the canal bank on the right and just the first signs of rain which is not forecast to be here to one o'clock always amuses me how the Met Office manages to get the forecast wrong so often the Met Office is actually based in Exeter just five miles from here and yet they're unable to get the forecast accurate for the very city that their office is based in 
I don't know what they could possibly do about the rest of the country given those inaccuracies anyway I can feel the first signs of rain morning people are always very friendly now if you can see the bridge ahead the high level bridge possibly some traffic going over it we'll see it better in a minute and you'll probably hear it on the soundtrack that is the M5 very busy particularly in the holiday season everyone heading down to the West Country constant rumble of tyre noise 24 hours and presumably a lot of diesel particulates dropping off the motorway to this area on the ground here oh look at this a lot of swans out this morning There we are, quite a picture. Yeah, around 20 of them I can see. very smooth bit of track here joy to ride on the canal is an absolute picture it's completely still and the reflections are really dramatic the sun's mostly behind us Coming up to an area now where there's a it's a much wider part of the canal presumably this was an industrial part where there was unloading and loading these boats are less than seaworthy condition let's just pull in here you're looking across at picturesque but basically derelict boats The canal basin is very wide here, so one assumes this is where the many of the large boats would, would turn. That's an absolute picture. Let's just stop here a minute. If you look down there now, absolute picture.
She seems to be running with her eyes shut, completely tightly shut. Maybe that's a new training technique. Right, we're going to come up shortly to where the canal goes under a very busy road. I believe it's the A379. It's dual carriageway in both directions. Okay. Okay, again. Which means on the odd occasion a large boat does come up here. They have to open the bridge to let it through. The bridge is actually in two parts. Uh, the first part is a swing bridge for the one carriageway and the second part is a bascule bridge with the counterweight which lifts up. Um, historically it's because the road was originally a single carriage road and then they widened it They put a different type of bridge in for the second half. I've only ever seen the bridges open once and it caused absolute chaos in this main road. Traffic was banked up for miles. And you can just see the bridge now, the, the big counterweights pulls the bridge up. For, for us there's a pedestrian crossing and it's much needed. So we're to a right turn here. This is the swing bridge, part of. We come down to the pedestrian control crossy crossing. Press the button. You can just see the amount of traffic. Here we go. This is the first carriageway across. You can see the amount of traffic and what chaos it would cause if that bridge was up for 20 minutes. Again, we have to do the same on this carriageway. Oh, it's clear. Okay. And then we rejoin the canal. Canal's now on our left. Paths on both sides of the canal. The one on the opposite bank is walkers only. This one is walkers and cyclists and very well used normally. The thing about canals is the reflections. It just makes it so picturesque. You know I've walked and cycled many of the industrial canals in this country and there are still very beautiful spots even as the canals pass through cities. Right, we're coming out to a spot called Double Locks. 
the uh, descriptive title tells you exactly what's going on here it's also the sign of a very large and popular pub a double locks pub on a summer's evening is absolutely crowded with people you can see the chairs all laid out here the seating on our right are uh, open fields down to the River X which is running on our right now and another track down there sort of gravel track you can walk all right we'll do a slight diversion here go down and see the locks just a small diversion off of the cycle path Here we are, this is the the two locks. Oh. Well, although it's called, called double locks, there is actually only one lock. So presumably those canal enthusiasts will know exactly why it's called double locks. Right, <coughs> this spot here on a summer's evening is very very busy mm. all right coming up here back onto the cycle path <clears throat> we're actually up on the road next to the cycle path but they run parallel so We're going to get back on the cycle track. There we are. Cycle track is actually a lot smoother than the road. Come out to a park area that you can park. This is the back of Marsh Barton Trading Estate. You can find your way through that. You can cross the little swing bridge here, and there seems to be a lot of free parking here, very popular with walkers and dogs. We're going to cross the <coughs> swing bridge here. It is narrow, but cars do get across it. Morning. 
to your left is the little lane that goes into the back of Marsh Park and Trading Estate. <clears throat> we could have not crossed the bridge there and followed the path on the other side of this canal. And but it is away from the canal itself. You don't see the canal. You go through quite pleasant green areas. And it is the more popular of the two paths. But uh, this is the one that keeps close to the canal. Some uh, boats moored up here, but they never seem to move. at the end of the canal good morning always at the end of the canal where it comes in at extra key uh, and meets the X again thank you That narrow bit is probably why this is the least popular of the two paths and why people go on the other side. <laughs> now the clever thing they did here uh, this area is the uh, canal and the river are at exactly the same level. There's no lock gates to get from the canal back onto the River X. They've done that by controlling the height of the River X with a series of weirs. And uh, obviously makes life a lot easier if you've got a boat. So. Looking there underneath that swing bridge that is where it joins the X and just to the left here is a little dock area where the boats are kept so we'll go down that way That is the end of the canal, that's the unloading area originally, now mostly pleasure boats.
Now the expansive river on the right is the River X and on our left we'll go down behind some uh, warehouses mostly converted now into small businesses and offices I don't know what that was Looking across there, that's an extra key. Shops and cafes, bicycle shop. And round here is what's called Haven Banks. Cycling club over there. And then we're at the end of the official end of the canal itself. The canal basin. This basin was constructed in 1830. Okay. Turf lock will be started. Turf hotel was completed in 1827. Topsham lock in 1832. Double locks. Okay. That really is the end of the ride. As you can see, a lot of cafes here, hugely popular in the weekends and holiday period. I'll just take you across and show you the extra key itself. key get more cafes pubs shops and if you look across here around the corner is a foot and bicycle bridge that connects the two I said earlier it's popular with rowers and there goes the crew And that's it folks, see you next time.